Kev, do you want to call Justin? Because the, the display is just not doing it. Buddy? The display is just not doing it. <laughs> but we have the Bluetooth control, yeah. But it's not Bluetooth. an event here that uh, we want to share with you. It's a first ever event, first ever event I'd say in the world certainly for Department of Defense, but first what I would like to do is to, to thank the Congressional Maker Caucus for making this event happen, for all the work that they have done, the boldness that they have shown and the fearlessness that they have shown to be able to create this environment for us to be able to do this here tonight. Now I wanted to share just a minute or two about uh, the journey that the Navy has been on with regard to added manufacturing and the maker movement and our involvement in it. It's really a, a Navy Marine Corps movement, that's why you can see my Marine Corps counterpart here. And, uh, hoorah! We, hoorah! That's right. <laughs> and what I wanted to share with you specifically is that our journey actually began in a very serendipitous grassroots way. One of the, the first parts of the journey was actually two years ago when uh, we happened to be at a White House Maker event and I bumped into the Made in Space CEO and we got to talking about the problems that they have with regard to what they were trying to solve, the problems of making something in space and our problem on board ship that goes around like this and making something where it's two G's not zero G's. 
So we got to talking with, uh, about that, and then I started to, to find out all the work that was going on with regard to additive manufacturing at the grassroots level around the Navy. And I'll show you one of those things that was a watershed moment for me. And that's this. I found that there were surgeons up at Bethesda Walter Reed that because they were working with wounded warriors up there and were trying to solve the problem of how do they make operations for those wounded warriors not take 10 hours, but to be able to solve the, the cranial reconstructions that they were doing in a way that was the best way to do it in only one hour. And the way they figured out how to do that was to take the 3D images that they had to be able to convert those 3D images into something that they could structurally be able to produce. Then to be able to use CAD CAM manufacturing, computer aided design, to be able to design the perfect replacement that did not have to be remanufactured in the operating room. So what they did was create the perfect replacement. But they had to find a perfect printer. And they had to find a metal printer that printed in titanium for $1.5 million. What was the value of that printer? It took the 10-hour operation and made it a one-hour operation. Value, priceless. So when we saw that, we knew that we were onto something that they had to have the boldness and the fearlessness by which to try to do that on their own without any help from uh, ostensible help uh, just within their own ranks. And we said, we can do that, and we can start to be able to, to print out other things. And we can be able to solve problems in aviation for us for a V-22, a manifold for a V-22, hydraulic manifold, and print it in titanium as well. By the way, this is a failure. If you look at the ends of it, uh, there are inclusions in it, so it doesn't work. But fail early, fail often, and then solve the problem. What we are on the, on the path to do here very shortly is to be able to fly a flight critical part within a month or so on a V-22 that is 3D printed. This is the plastic version, and of course we have metal ones now. So you can see this is a journey, and the journey doesn't come easy and it doesn't come without failures, but those failures lead us to some great successes. Someday, what we hope to do is to be able to 3D print this, fuel, 3D print it from seawater. We figured out how to do it. It's not economic yet, but we'll get there. That's part of the journey. Eventually, we're going to be 3D printing. This is a 3D printed unmanned aerial vehicle. It's not complete. It's got some other parts to it. But we can print these on demand. And that's a little bit of the point, is to print things on demand where they're needed, when they're needed, wherever they're needed, whether that be ashore, afloat, or in space. So that is part of our next journey, is that we have a part, this is the larger version of it, called the True Clip, that was designed by three sailors, a lieutenant, a chief petty officer, and a second class petty officer on the Truman that's half a world away, on deployment. And this part, that they designed is being digitally sent to us. This is the actual size of it. And digitally sent to us so that we can in turn send that to the International Space Station, which is what we're gonna do. So although these are small steps, they are kind of a giant leap for everyone. Bringing maker movement, and not just the maker movement, but manufacturing back to America. Because it's the innovativeness of Americans that is something that is so, so very special and is captured at every level, whether it's a second class petty officer or a student in a school or it's a, a doctor that's working on, uh, on a, a additional learning at, uh, and, uh, and programs up at, uh, at our institutes of higher learning. All of those are part of the journey for all of us and it will change the face of the world. And it's disruptive technology at its finest but it's leading us, I think, to a, a new world that makes much better use of the resources that we have. So with that, I think perhaps, unless anyone Tim, else... We have Tim Ryan oh, here at the chair. Oh, here he is. Tim. Sure. Hi. Thank you sir. so much. Thank you so much. Great presentation. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Ryan from Ohio. Uh, we started, Mark and I, and Mr. Takano, and uh, Mr. Stivers, and others have started this caucus because we see the unbelievable potential that lies in additive manufacturing, 3D printing, and the entire maker movement. 
and one of the privileges we all have as members of Congress is to travel and when you travel as I did a few months ago we were on the USS Harry Truman in the middle of the Persian Gulf in which they had a couple 3d printers on there but you think how difficult it is for us to have the military performing at peak levels for the global war on terrorism and every other challenge that we have for us to bring this technology to bear on our responsibilities around the world takes us to the next level. That's just in the military and we see what can happen in the economy as well. If you look at the top 1% of startup jobs, or of startup companies, I'm sorry, the top 1% of startup companies have created 40% of net new jobs. So we need, as a Congress, to support, encourage, and help grow this industry that has tremendous growth potential. And that's not a simple way, there's not a simple way to do it. It's about cultivating the industry, it's about public-private partnerships, it's about research and development tax credit, it's about getting these companies through the valley of death when they may run out of money and before they can get to the point where they can really thrive and start creating jobs. We've got a lot of responsibility here to help grow this industry, but when you see how this crosses all sectors of the economy, manufacturing, aerospace, healthcare, energy, this behind the scenes is going to drive an entire new economy that our kids and grandkids need to help grow and support and encourage to keep America on the frontier of this technology. So I want to thank our partners in the military. I want to thank my fellow members of Congress. This is exciting just to hear a buzz. There's a lot of little cocktail parties we go to in Washington, D.C. None as cool as this. Yeah. So we want to yeah. thank you all for being here. And those of you who are representing your members of Congress, please continue. We know it's hard to penetrate members of Congress with new ideas and new technologies, but they need to see this. You need to communicate it to them because we need to make sure that the federal government is trying to move. I know it won't move as quickly as some of the private sector and some of these new technologies are moving, but we got to be at pace and we can't be holding them back. We got to be unleashing all of this potential. So thank you so very much for being here. So with that, we've sent the file to space, and you can see the progress bar starting. So now we're sending the file from here to the International Space Station to be printed, uh, which will later be printed. Um, this is the first. This is the first time we've ever sent this um, from from anywhere except a control room, either in Florida or in uh, Austin.